they turn ordinary steel into super steel to create the ultimate blade for 21st century samurai. We show you how on How Do They Do It. For most of human history, the sword was the warrior's most important weapon. The swordsmith's art was perfected early and barely changed for centuries. But Dan Watson is out to beat perfection with a blade which is harder, sharper, and deadlier than any created in the ancient world. So, how do they do it? Meet Daniel Watson. He's a master of the Japanese martial art of Tamashigiri. In 17th century Japan, this test of sword and swordsman was conducted on human cadavers and condemned criminals. These days, masters like Dan use logs of tightly packed plants or woven straw to simulate the toughness and consistency of a real human body. And this is what Dan's sharpest blades will do to an arm, leg, or neck. You can pick up a sword from Dan at his foundry here in Driftwood, Texas, but it will cost you as much as $22,000. That's because these are no ordinary swords. Dan's technique for making super steel blades begins with a piece of ordinary steel and a computer-controlled precision milling machine. Milling metal creates massive heat, so the steel is bathed in green coolant cutting fluid. This liquid both cools and lubricates the cutter head as it grinds the metal into a basic blade shape. But ordinary carbon steel like this isn't good enough for Dan's swords. It is too brittle and could break in a serious fight. Ping. To make the ultimate blade, Dan must turn this ordinary steel into a super steel, which is fantastically sharp, tough, and flexible. The process begins with some time-honored techniques of traditional swordsmithing. In the heat of the forge, the blade enters a no-man's land between tough steel and molten liquid, a state known as solid solution. In this state, the blade retains its shape, but molecules within the steel are free to move around. The changing color of the surface of the metal tells Dan what's happening inside the blade. One of the things that's key in this process is the chemistry of the flame. We are controlling the chemistry of the steel through the chemistry of the flame. When the blade reaches this semi-fluid state, Dan is able to work on the steel using a traditional blacksmith hammer. But Dan isn't just shaping the blade. He's deliberately denting the edge. Dan's beating these dents into the metal to shape the bands of hard minerals that run through ordinary steel like grain through wood. As Dan hammers, the steel's grain shifts from straight lines to a swirling pattern, like the spiraling grooves inside the barrel of a gun. Now, the energy from any heavy impact has to travel all the way along these swirls before the blade breaks. The overall breaking strength is roughly doubled because of the longer path the crack has to travel. But it's still not complete. Now, Dan turns to some 21st century technology to push the strength of the blade far beyond anything his ancient counterparts could have achieved. After being superheated to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, the blade is suddenly plunged into what's called a quench tank filled with ice cold water. That was what's called a flaming quench. <laughs> this is the hardening of the blade. But cold water isn't nearly enough for Dan. How hot the blade gets, how quickly it's cooled, and how cold it then becomes all determine how tough, flexible, and sharp the swordsmith can make it. So Dan uses a computer-controlled cryogenic freezing unit to tighten the steel's molecular structure. For over a week, the sword will be chilled to minus 360 and heated to 450 degrees Fahrenheit over and over again 
until Dan thinks the steel simply can't get any harder. What we're doing is we are combining classic hammer anvil fire and sweat with 21st century metallurgy combined to make a super sword. This is now a super steel. A super steel sword needs a super tough handle. So Dan has to fire up the forge again to create a hilt capable of handling the massive impacts of a real sword fight. And Dan has even subjected his super steel to electron microscope analysis, which has shown that the arrangement of molecules in his blade is almost identical to the finest in the ancient world, swords that could cut through armor. After a dazzling range of decorative touches, including Dan's trademark dragon handle, the blade is finally ready. What you got for me today? Today, the most important judge of the sword's quality is the customer. Getting his hands on a super steel blade is a dream come true for collector Tom Freeman. Now to test the high-tech metal on the would-be victim. Let's go cut something with it. Try it out. All right. If you're game for it. This downward diagonal cut, or kesagiri, allows Dan to rotate his whole body, putting the maximum force behind the blade. Dan, as we said, is a past master of the deadly art of Tame Shigiri. Now it's your turn, Tom. Tom is more of a future master. But after several attempts under expert supervision, he finally harnesses the power of Dan's super steel. But this thing is wickedly sharp. Tom loves his super steel sword. Let's just hope it doesn't cost him an arm and a leg. <laughs> 